Hi, everybody. Welcome to Queers and Soaps. This is our very special Knots Landing segment, The Abbey Scale. And as always, I'm Tommy, joined by Aaron. Hello. And we're joined by our Knots Landing historian, <laughs> Lynn. Ooh, what a fancy way to say that. <laughs> nice. Welcome. What a fancy way to say obsessed fan. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, so today we're talking about season four, episodes seven through 10. And uh, I have a lot of comments. I took a lot of notes this time. Ooh, nice. <laughs> So let's roll the credits and we'll get started. Well, much like me in college, I didn't take notes. Never did. <laughs> You've got it all locked in here. It's all good. I just hope well, it comes back. Episode seven was called Investments, and investments were definitely made. Um, we start out, well, this is the, the camping episode also with Mac and Karen. <laughs> yes, it was. Which they had mentioned camping a couple of episodes back, and I was like, wait, is this the episode? But it wasn't. <laughs> For me, I went straight to, oh, they're going to have sex. Like, that's straight where I went to. Yeah. Why else would you go camping? Well, Mac wanted to. Mac definitely <laughs> wanted to. She did too. She did. She was kind of holding back, but at, in the end all do all, she kind of admitted it. Shows uh -huh. what kind of world I live in, though. Then I'm like, oh, they're going camping. I bet they have sex. <laughs> but then they didn't. So, shocker, plot twist. Um, she took everything Diane. in the kitchen sink for her suitcase, which was kind of funny. As <laughs> Eric's lugging it down the stairs. Diane is still not a fan of Mac. No. Ugh. And I'm still not a fan of Diana. <laughs> so, hmm. I must have forgotten that I don't really care for Diana because I have like this, like, oh, she's not so bad. She's annoying I keep, me. <laughs> I keep the, I'm like, her hair reminds me of Felicity when she cut it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying it's bad. I just spent like that's. I'm like, I wonder if they throw a fit when you cut your hair. <laughs> um. And Karen, all she can do is talk about Diana and like how they could try and make her like Mac and like how they could get through to her. Yes. And Mac's like, this is about us. Like, this is our weekend. Let's not talk about the kids. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, oh, Val comes home from her book tour. And surprise, there's Chip giving Lily Mae the massage on the couch. Right. <laughs> Poor this is an man. odd relationship because he like he he kind of flirts with Lily May to get what he wants, but he doesn't ever cross the line. He knows how to give just enough to get stuff out of her. Well, I think the big thing is he gives people attention and the women are usually flattered by that. He's got that charm and swagger and that sly smile that they succumb to pretty quickly. Each one of us would have fell for it too. So, oh, he's very cute. Very I mean, cute. me and Tommy would have been on the floor. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we would have. I mean, because we have fallen. I'll tell people my business. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Truth hurts, honey. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I like how Lily May makes Val feel like she was in on the decision to have Chip live there. Yeah, she's very manipul manipulative too. Mm -hmm. And she wants well, to be. She's crafty. In a previous episode, didn't hadn't Val hung up and Lily May pretended to still be on the phone with her and said that oh he she said you could stay. Kind of oh, lying. so she's not lying. She told Val. Val just hung up and wasn't there for the rest. <laughs> but she of knew Val was, had hung up. <laughs> not in Lily May's world. Oh man. <laughs> um, also, something I noticed about Lily May, she's still a, a, a looky loo. She's always looking out the window what the neighbors are doing. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a southern thing. I mean, I do the same thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> then it's an everywhere thing. Because. My sister's bad about she'll leave the door open just so she can see what's going on in the neighborhood. I mean, there's a screen whenever door. I, there's a screen yeah. door, but sure. whenever I hear voices or I hear a car door or a car go by, I'm looking out the window like, who's here? 
Um, Funny. Gary buys a ranch. Ooh. Well, he wants to. Or did he buy it or did he just show it to Abby? I thought he bought it. And he was like, this is where we're going to live. And Abby, trying to wiggle her way out of it because she wasn't a fan, was like, oh, this is a nice place for weekends and oh, to get away. Get away. <laughs> She's gonna, she, she's becoming too needy, like not needy, but like control. She's, becoming, yeah. she's getting power. She's getting she's, yes, she, she talks like it's her money, and it's not. Yes, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, girl, he left his wife for you. He'll leave yeah. you for another woman. Mm-hmm. But I feel like when she starts to get like that, and he starts to push back, she knows that she needs to reel it in. And kind of work him a little bit, like flirtatiously, to get what yeah. she wants. Mm-hmm. Um, I was cracking up when Mac and Karen were fishing, and he kept telling her to shut up. <laughs> and she that's just kept. It. She's like, "I can't help it when I think of something, I have to say it." <laughs> that's me fishing. <laughs> I went fishing one time. I was told to talk too much. I was like, hmm, "Last time we're going fishing." Oh, yeah. funny. I can't remember last time I went fishing, but yeah, that probably... I was a little kid with my grandpa. We didn't go anymore. Oh. Can't help it. Uh, I like talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he tells her she's scaring the fish, so then she whispers and he yells. <laughs> and she's like, you're yelling. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good... She got to do very comedic stuff, so that was fun for her, I bet. It was... Yeah. A- good back and forth dynamic between those two to see. Oh. <laughs> My next note was Gary and me start our own record company. I probably meant to write Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> you and Gary start a record company? Ooh. <laughs> Watch out for that Abby. <laughs> or maybe and, then, and Ginger's Kenny. not <laughs> and Ginger's not happy about it. And she goes and tattles to Abby. Inadvertently, because I think she thinks Abby knows about it. Right. Because Abby's just kind of like, oh, I'll talk to him. And then she shows up and, and she's like, like are you, kidding me? you guys are starting a record company? And tries to be all mm. funny. <laughs> and Gary's like, uh, Kenny, can you give Abby and I a minute alone in your office? Uh-huh. Um, again, trying to control how he spends his money. Well, and I don't think she likes there's a new girl in town. Who he is just like flaunting over. I flip flop on how she feels on her because sometimes it seems like she sees her as like a money maker. Because she wasn't a fan of the whole record company thing. And then all of a sudden I felt like she doubled down and she was calling Jeff Munson and she's trying to make CG a star. <laughs> right. Well, I was trying to figure out is she trying to get someone else to take CG away, buy out the contract, and then she can get some money and be done with CG. She's definitely doing the rush return on investment, it seems like. Yeah, she's uh, hustling like we hustle for this podcast. I mean, it's like, I went and bought this at the pawn shop, and now I'm going to sell it on eBay for four times the price. Okay. Slow your roll. <laughs> um, Ginger's jealous because Kenny seems to invest in everybody else's career except hers. No, like, she's not like a teacher. She's not jealous. She's jealous she doesn't have a storyline. <laughs> <laughs> well, her storyline is that she's jealous. <laughs> or that she's got too much time to take care of Aaron Molly, perhaps, maybe. <laughs> I laugh every time I hear Aaron Molly because I know how much Aaron hates it. <laughs> I don't know why. I just don't care for it. All the names <laughs> name your child. <laughs> um, CG and Chip meet for the first mm-hmm. time. Which always confused me because I... I wasn't sure if they knew each other and were already messing around before this happened and they were just keeping it a secret from everybody. I don't think so. I think that was when Lily Mae introduced Chip to Kenny and CG. I I honestly think that was the first time and they were just instantly kind of, it was kind of love or lust at first sight. He was putting his hand in everybody's honey pot. (laughs) Mm -hmm. If they can advance his career in any way, he'll... uh, Attach himself to him. God, like he, sounds, early, he sounds like us. <laughs> Earlier that day, he gets a car from Diana out of Knott's Landing Motors while Karen's still out of town. And she's like, oh, my mom's got plenty of cars. I don't feel like it's that easy. 
Okay, even I thought that even if, I was like, first of all, you have to go to the DMV. You got to get license, please. <laughs> even you if your parent registered. owns the car dealership, I don't feel like it's that easy. But I did love when Karen went. Mm-hmm. The car looks familiar. That's Is one that of my, cars. my lot. Is that yeah. for my showroom? <laughs> um, Uncle Joe gets a job in New York. Mm-hmm. We say goodbye to Uncle Joe. Mm-hmm. Right, because well, I, 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 I did fight. Like, and she comes back and she's upset that he wants to leave and go to New York. Yeah. I liked her little, it, it felt like even though they're adults, like two siblings, cause she like started crying and she's like, I'm not ready for you to go. And she like stormed off. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, she's got a little Diana in her. It's yeah. dramatic. That's where Diana gets it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, then she tells him that he should go. He's been there long enough and it's time. Right. Um, it's time. Richard has been turned down for loans from a few banks, and Gary decides to lend him some money. Mm-hmm. Um, which, you know, Abby has to step in now. Well, yeah, she- but when she did the whole little note thing, I was like, what the fuck you want with a restaurant, Abby? What the fuck does she want with a record company? <laughs> that too. I'm like... You doing it like I'm doing it, putting my foot in everything. <laughs> no well, she, wants to able, she wants to stop the bleeding out if she needs to. So if they gave Richard a big amount of money and he's buying different things and she doesn't like it, she wants to be able to say, no, we're foreclosing. And at least if she gave him $50,000, there might still be 20000 left instead of it totally, he's spending it all left and right. Yeah. Deal. And um, and Richard reluctantly signs it because he wants the money, but he hasn't told Laura yet. Yeah. And um, the episode ends with Karen and Mac. They kind of they they always squabble. They they have like this like push and pull, like comedic yelling that they do with each other all the time. And after the camping trip, they're like, "It's not going to work," but they kind of. I liked when he pulled off, when he dropped her off, and he was like, watch your toes. And, like, he still cared enough to tell, like, to tell her to move out of the way. <laughs> um, but they make up at the end, and then they realize that they have the house to themselves. So uh-huh. Diana runs off with Chip, and the, the boys are gone. It can be inferred that they had sex for the first time. Mm-hmm. So, so that was episode seven. I was yes. like, get it, girl. <laughs> she needed that so, bet. Probably. So, are we, are we a fan of Mac, Aaron? Oh, I like Mac. Do you like him better than Sid? The same as Sid, differently? I feel like it's apples to oranges. Okay. Like, I feel like they're just two different, you know. All right. He's a good challenge for Karen, I think, because Sid. Could be a little fatherly or the man of the house figure. And when Sid died, Karen became the man of the house, if you will. And this was a interesting power struggle for Karen to kind of give up some of her power. And I think that's why her and Matt get so heated mm-hmm. once in a while. <laughs> because he's used to being so independent himself after being as old as he is and never been married and had a family and yada, yada, yada. Um, so episode eight is called Man in the Middle. And Abby's kind of going over the books at the restaurant, and she's not happy with how Richard is running the restaurant. He's only having one seating. He has to have the most expensive everything. I don't and get how he's still in business. That's rich. Isn't that Richard though? Like everything he does, it has to be the best of the best, and he just like drives everything into the ground. <laughs> Could we say he's the best at wasting money? <laughs> <laughs> Like remember when they were having money troubles in like the first or second season, and he stops to look like at a vintage car that was for sale. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> He's got money issue. I mean, who doesn't? He's trying yeah. to live the American dream. I love yeah. Abby's line when he said, "You know, it's my dream," and she's like, "You need to dream more profitably." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she ain't wrong. <laughs> and they get their snark out just before Laura shows up, and then Laura's. Or Abby's like, oh, Laura, I've got to go. I'll see you later. Yeah. And he says, because he got a, uh, an espresso machine. 
Yeah, that's why she's not buying. Meanwhile, the machine's not even set off. I know it. <laughs> and you can tell Laura knows that something's up. Totally. She knows. Also, she doesn't like Abby, and she doesn't trust Abby because of Abby had an affair with Richard at one point. Right. Um, which it's I always block of... out. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Abby and Gary move into the beach house. I was waiting for this. I love that beach house. Mm. Something about that stairway. I just really like it. How it goes down. Yeah. It's, house. it's interesting. It's got all those peak windows so you could see the water. I could see that be kind of inviting. Yes. So I guess Abby won the whole ranch fight. <laughs> this time. Yes. <laughs> This is when we start to see Di- Diana or Olivia. This is the episode where they're playing Monopoly, right? No. I think so. Oh, is that the next one? Okay. It's the next one. Okay. Because yeah. I have a note about that one. <laughs> uh, funny. But this is the one you're right. She decorates everything. And even Kenny, when he stops over, he's like, oh, nice house. And Gary's like, yeah, we found it. She did all the decorating. Da, 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 da. I'm like, she's, she's exuding the control pretty quick. Yeah. Well, Gary's not even married to him. Like, she has no legal right to the money. She's not married to him. No. No. Like, he could one day just be like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. And then she doesn't have money. Right? Something cold. Um, Abby suggests that CG sing at at Daniel. Which, smart idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Richard is like so dead against it because he doesn't want the restaurant to be a nightclub. Wasn't his vision, so yeah, he is a little bit reluctant. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh, so it, this is the episode with the beach club so right. that uh, Diana and Chip were playing tennis at. Um. Okay. Since when do the fair kids belong to a beach club? Like, <laughs> I know they're not like poor, but like I, I thought they were like, guys, like rich enough to be members of like a country club. <laughs> maybe Sid's life insurance. <laughs> it seemed a little <laughs> bit. It seemed a little bit Diney La Mirage. All of a sudden, they're playing tennis and they run into somebody who's kind of wealthy, aloof, and he's like, "Hey, Diana!" And Chip gets introduced to him, and the next thing you know, they're setting up a dinner together. Yeah, like Diana knows all these men as if she grew up there, like going right. to the country club and like. It's like your you know, dad like, own your dad owned a family. Used, <laughs> your dad owned a used car dealership and not a chain, just one. Right. <laughs> so that was a little confusing to me. Which was having money troubles, it seems too. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> but. Um. But she introduces him to some people, and he he kind of lies and says he he likes the milk this that he worked for that uh, firm. I can't remember the name, Riker. Right. That's best Riker's firm. Yeah. Even though she fired him and kicked him out, <laughs> and he thought for sure his che- his last check was coming for her on Friday. Yeah, for the last two it weeks. ain't it ain't coming. <laughs> <laughs> So he needs a blazer to go to dinner with these people, and Lily Mae gives him money for it. Man, she's just pouring Val's money away, isn't she? Because obviously Lily Mae's got to get her money from somewhere. So I'm like, is Chip living there rent-free, food-free, and then other people are buying his clothing? Car. Right, car-free. I'm like, (laughs) man is working it. (laughs) And he's got two women. (laughs) <laughs> Aaron's um, like texting he's like this chip is kind of into it all and I'm like oh yeah <laughs> um, so there's a scene where Gary visits CG at her apartment and she doesn't let him in because she says the apartment is, is a mess but you can kind of tell that somebody's there with her yeah. And when he leaves and she goes back to the bed, we see that Chip is in bed with her. Yes. That didn't take so, long. No. <laughs> now this is, I think, in the past when I saw this, this is why I thought that we had something 
prior to them meeting. Because it just seemed like it was happening so fast. <laughs> right. Yeah. It did. They they pushed that pretty quickly in the plot point. Um, there's a scene at Daniel where they're getting ready for CG's performance and Chip is on the, making phone calls to like promote her. And Abby's just in the background listening and she's just like, <laughs> very, like almost impressed. Like yes. she gets tell that he's like like a con artist, but she's just like, hmm, that's something I would do. She's <laughs> like, hey, make my investment grow. That's cool. I'll let you. I'll support that. Maybe she's thinking, <laughs> I wonder if he's my son. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I've given up. A, no, I'm just. Kidding. <laughs> um, go ahead. I love how the first minute they go to dinner, right away, Chip gets a phone call, and Diana's like. Wow, are you trying to impress people by having yourself paged? And lo and behold, it was CG. Yeah, who makes it sound like it's an emergency? And then when he goes there, she says, I just want to see if he would come. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, wow, you're needy. <laughs> so I was going to say, already she's the needy girlfriend, too. I know, between that and Diana, <laughs> he doesn't have a chance. <laughs> um... I think that's pretty much it for that episode, unless you guys can remember mm -mm. something else. Well, I thought it was kind of funny that they, um, that then Max started really reading Diana the right act about Chip when Chip disappeared. And, you know, that made Diana really angry at Mac and not like him, which kind of then leads up to her wanting to make amends in the next episode. But it was just, it was kind of interesting how everybody that night ended up going to the restaurant and seeing CG sing. Mm -hmm. So they end up going from the beach club to the restaurant and seeing her sing and whatnot. And, you know, Ginger's just kind of watching her perform, but not liking it. And it was just, it was kind of humorous. I've noticed during these performances, when they show all the couples in the audience listening and like being into it, they each have like facial expressions or they do things with their eyes that kind of like, show whatever that character is going through in that moment. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I noticed that Ginger always has like her arm around Kenny and very like. <laughs> <laughs> off the, he's mom, bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, I think, I, was, I think you got, I think you covered it. I just kind of was having a laugh that they went from the beach club to everybody ends up at the restaurant that night and sees her sing. Yeah. Um, I did like at the beach club though, when they were waiting for Chip to come back, then Mac was like, ask Diana to dance. And she was like, no thanks. So wait, I'm waiting for Chip. <laughs> but Mac doesn't realize that he does it. He's like, he's a creep. He's a, he's a jerk or whatever. And then he's like, come on, let's dance. Like, yeah. Dance. Diana doesn't like that. <laughs> no. He's, he's kind of overstepping and doing the father figure role right away. And I'm sure she's not thrilled about that because she's not really looking at him as a replacement for her dad. Yeah. All right. Well, episode nine is called The Best Kept Secret. And it opens with the Fairgate kids playing video games. And I know it wasn't Nintendo. Was that Atari? Atari? It had to have been Atari. It had to be. <laughs> All right. And the boys are kind of giving Diana a hard time about how she treats Mac. Mm -hmm. And how they like him. And that he's good for their mother. Yes. And she kind of is, comes to terms with that and decides to go see him and apologize. Um, so she goes to his apartment. At the and meanwhile, meanwhile, Val and Karen are hanging out together, and Val even says to Karen, "You're falling in love with him." And Karen just gets a big grin on her face. Uh -huh. So we're setting that dynamic that Val's starting to recognize that her friend, best friend Karen, is falling in love with Mac too. So then it's ironic. Continue on, Tommy, with Diana going over to Max. Is it? That scene when she says that, is that when um, Valina is polishing things? Or no. is that after the fact? <laughs> that comes after the polish scene. With the fudge? <laughs> yes. I, it was like, no. 
<laughs> she was like, no, and she slides it away, and Val just slides it back, and she takes a piece. <laughs> that just felt such, like such a genuine, real moment. <laughs> I, I think oh, yeah, it was because I mean, they teased Michelle Lee about her appetite on the set, too. So I think really? that was kind of a, a joke as well. <laughs> um, a record producer named Jeff Munson wants to come and um, hear CG. And Kenny is afraid that he's being phased out of CG's career. Yeah. And Abby's just like, he's so paranoid. Can you blame him, Abby? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so Diana goes to Max to, you know, kind of have a fresh start with him. Mm -hmm. And a woman in her nighty comes out of the bathroom. He could have easily said, not, I'm not condemning, you know, whatever. I mean, he could have easily said, that's my neighbor. Her toilet's broken. Fixed. Um, so Mac rushes over to Karen's house to tell her what happened before Diana does. Right. And <laughs> Karen's like, was she naked? No. She was in a robe for her underwear. <laughs> mm. Again, toilets broken. Being a good neighbor. Well, I think the big thing is too. They hadn't discussed their relationship. Meaning, are they exclusive mm -hmm. or are they not? And that's when Mac found out. Ah, Karen thought we were exclusive. I didn't realize that was the case. She doesn't realize I like to have sex. She doesn't realize I have an F buddy across the hallway that I do probably once a week. So yeah, it was. I've known her for years. Yep. It, pre like, it predates you. Like, yep. It doesn't mean anything. And he said the classic line: "It didn't mean anything." Yeah. <laughs> it never does. I mean, well, yeah, it didn't have to mean anything. <laughs> I feel like sex has changed since the eighties. Now it's like, oh, you had sex? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Um, well, Karen, I think, has only ever been with um, Sid. Sid and, and now Mac. Mm -hmm. Could um, you imagine? I mean, oh, that's just, yeah. It's not that kind of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Laura finds the check that Richard made out to Abby, the first payment for the loan. Mm -hmm. And she's pissed. She confronts <laughs> him on it. <laughs> Basically, she's like, did you sign a note? And he just kind of sidesides her. And she's like, what are the terms? It's like, mm -hmm. well, if we're losing money, she's, they can foreclose. And she just loses it. Yeah. And she's like, I couldn't understand why Abby, like, you were, like, cowering to Abby's demands. But now I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. Which I feel like that was pivotal to, pivotal to her feeling like, why did I go back with him? Yeah, because she's had, she's having big doubts already. We didn't we didn't see it a lot in that episode, but it's going to start to unfold here. Was this the episode she was at the therapist, or was it the next one? She did in this one go to the it was this one therapist. Yeah, and she <laughs> she's basically I want you to give me an answer, and they're like, you know, I can't do that. <laughs> Tell me what to do. Like, I think I love him. And then he does sh shit like this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so Gary and Abby are, I think, fighting over um, Kenny and Jeff Munson because he doesn't want Kenny to be pushed out. and They're kind of fighting in the background. We don't really hear everything they're saying. And <laughs> we kind of focus on Olivia and her friend playing Monopoly. <laughs> Wait, don't you don't you mean Abby Jr.? <laughs> um, Olivia says that he's still married to Val, but they're incomparable. I think she meant to say <laughs> incompatible. Yep, it was cute. She said, that means they don't make up. She's like, my mom and Gary, they make up. <laughs> <laughs> or they work it out. That's what she says. Oh, that's funny. And uh, Gary kind of storms off, says he's going to go see CG rehearse. And Abby just kind of like smirks at Olivia and walks away. And Abby, um, Olivia tries to get Monopoly or tries to like 
yeah, she tries to get Monopoly, and her friend's like, no, that means you'll get Monopoly. And she's like, business is business, take it or leave it. And she just kind of leaves that. <laughs> That was a little foreshadowing, wasn't it? It's kind of like, yeah. like mother, like daughter. <laughs> that was funny. I was like, wow, I didn't remember this. <laughs> I look forward to seeing her grow up and how she acts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you're in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, so Diana comes to visit Chip. <laughs> and she's all down in the dumps about the Mac thing. And I liked his line. Where he's like, why did you come here? And she's like, I can't, I wanted to see you. And he's like, do me a favor, don't come to see me. <laughs> because she was so like, blah. <laughs> yeah. So he leaves with her to like, I guess, cheer her up. And just as like, the moment CG's done rehearsing and can't find her. Yep. And uh, she goes off with Gary in, to test out his new car. And, uh, I liked her scene where she kept turning to the guy that was working there to tell Chip something, and she kept changing it. And then she was like, don't tell him anything. <laughs> and then didn't the guy just speak Spanish, so he maybe didn't even understand what she said? Was Did she he speak Spanish? Because I felt like he was just, like, crazy, like... He was like, oh, crazy, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I would have done the same thing she did, though. You know, tell him that, you know what? Let's leave it a mystery. Yeah. Don't tell him anything. Um, so they go back to CG's apartment. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, Gary's about to cheat on Abby. And she shows him the purple dress. And he's like, well, I can't really tell. And she's like, well, let me try it on. And then she just takes her top off in front of him. <laughs> and he stands there and looks at her. Mm, okay. <laughs> Doesn't even try to turn around. Nothing. Nope. It's it's like, oh no. Yeah. Or yeah, anything. Or, yeah. Um. So then later on, Karen goes to Val's. When that's the scene where Val's polishing everything. Yes. To tell her about Mac, and she says that Diana saw her with another woman, and Val says, "I know how that feels." Yep. And Karen kind of says, I don't know how you got through it. And she says, I had to. <laughs> I didn't have a choice. Yeah. I wrote a book and became rich. <laughs> <It's> seven <laughs> episodes. <laughs> Quite a bad cover, but it still sold a lot of money or a lot of books. <laughs> oh, I know. I would have been reading Capricorn. <laughs> Wait, Cap, whatever. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I would have totally been there. I would have been in line for it. I would have purchased it in hardback. Um, Gotten your autograph copy? I sure would have. That's right. Val goes to Daniel for the first time. Mm -hmm. she's, she's, kind of been, she's kind of been, well, she was out of town, but she's kind of been separated from the group for a few mm -hmm. episodes. I love that she knew the music producer, and Abby's just like, wow. Yeah. I liked when she said, Karen had her look, and she's like, I think you look great, or whatever. And she's like, I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> she's feeling herself. That's good yeah. for Val. <laughs> um, yeah, she knew the music producer, and you kind of see Abby on the side, like, what's going on there? <laughs> the intertwining, I kind of like the umbrella portion of it on how everybody kind of knows everybody, and it makes sense on how the players are all interwoven. Mm -hmm. Um. Karen finally comes face to face with Diana to talk about what happened with Mac. And uh, they have a heart to heart in the bathroom. I like their mom and daughter heart to hearts that always end in a hug. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mac is there and she kind of brushes him off that it's not going to work. Like, we obviously. He finally tells her he loves her, too, and that kind of shocks her. And she's like, I can't do this with you. Yeah. She basically lies and says she doesn't love him. That's why I thought it was so poignant that Val said to Karen, you're falling in love with him. And Karen just smiles and grins really big because she was. Because then after Mac told Karen what Diana walked in on and he gets up and leaves her house, she's just on the couch and she's like, damn. Because she's like, yeah. <laughs> I go not how I thought it was going to go. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> 
Damn. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. So CG has a whole performance where she sings a song called If Love Must Go. Or Love Must Go. I'm just going off the chorus. I don't know the actual name. Um, which I've been singing all day. <laughs> that ain't how it feels. <laughs> I bet you feel like you have a hole in your heart. Uh. <laughs> and uh, Karen just like falls to pieces. She is everybody's like all into the performance, and Karen is just like sobbing. <laughs> yeah, having an emotional reaction, definitely. Totally would have been me. <laughs> I just would have been more of a puddle. <laughs> and that's how that episode ends I thought it was interesting too right before CG sang it was of course Gary that brought CG back to the restaurant and Abby saw the two of them together and she did have a little ping of what's he doing with another woman let yeah. alone another blonde woman you know what I mean and Val catches it too but then Gary and Abby peek outside and just have their little talk and get over their little disagreement that they had I like that Val is making the effort to not run away whenever she sees the two of them. <laughs> but she still has like that twitch when she sees them. Like you could tell she's struggling. Of course. Yeah. Because, you know, she's still the trauma from everything that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that she's not like running off crying and screaming like she was in the beginning of the season. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so then. Episode 10 is called Emergency. And yeah. this is the episode that I remembered Diana screaming and sounding like nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I thought, like, after that, everything else with Diana was good, but she's been really annoying me this season. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, the only time I felt for, for her was when she was like, get this out of, like... When she's having the freak out about, like, that's her life now is di dialysis. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sure anyone would have been having those same thoughts. So I was right. like, oh, I feel for you. Still don't like you, but I feel for you. This is actually the one episode I did not take notes on. Oh. Um, so Diana goes away for the weekend with Gary and Abby. And Aunt Abby. And Abby kind of set this up to run into Jeff Munson, knowing he would be there. She set something up? Abby, that doesn't sound like her. <laughs> <laughs> all business, all the time. And when Gary realizes it, when he sees Jeff, he's just like, freaking Abby. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like that's Tommy to me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Like, hey, hey, we're doing me. something. You wouldn't just do it. Like, you wouldn't just like pop something on. You'd be like, I'm gonna do this. What do you think? And then you probably do it anyway. But still, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give you a moment to think. It's like we're gonna do this. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. It's like <laughs> that. It. It's like when Monica <laughs> is like, all right. Anyone else have any ideas? Good. No. Okay. <laughs> go with mine. Um. And before they even left for the weekend, Karen was saying to them that Diana looks off, like she looks tired, like she might be coming down with something. Mm -hmm. She swears she's fine. And as the weekend progresses, she starts to feel worse and worse, so she decides to go back to the room and relax. But she doesn't make it. She passes out. Yeah. And they bring her back home. And Karen wants to know what happened, and Abby kind of gets defensive, and she's like, you're not going to put this on me, wicked, wicked Abby. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, she's my niece, I care about her too. Um, so we find out that she's in a renal failure, and she either needs a donor, or she has to be on dialysis. Um, and so the whole family gets tested, but they're not a match. And she said that means your husband must have been a match. So if he had any siblings. Fine knowledge. This isn't part, you know, Knox Land related. A kid doesn't have to have both their parents' blood types. Yeah. My mom is like one in four. She doesn't have her mom or dad's blood type. Oh, wow. I mean, but she's clearly 
related to them. <laughs> but she was like, good Lord, why am I always one in four? But like, that's what the doctor, you know, it's rare, but it happens. Yes. So I just thought, I'd like to show I know a little bit of biology. Michael had his little moments of shine where he was upset and he was like, oh, take God. mine, take my kidney. <laughs> yeah. Poor little Michael. <laughs> he had a growth spurt. He looked a little taller. <laughs> his voice is getting deeper too. I was like, ooh, that's that's the one thing uh, you can tell as the kids grow on any kind of show is in between the seasons, there's uh, always uh, like they like we'll grow and voice changes a little bit. Uh-huh. Um, and Eric goes and gets Mac. And yeah. tells them what's going on. So Mac comes to the hospital. Which and Mac is sweet. Says, Did your mother ask you to come here? And he says, no, she doesn't know I'm here. But she yeah. needs you. I know. I was like, oh, <laughs> That's so sweet. So Karen realizes that she has to ask Abby for help. She doesn't want to do that. <laughs> uh, after she's been so cold to her, it's going to be a bitter pill to swallow. But like Max says to her, you have no choice. You've got to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so she goes to the beach house and she explains what's going on. And she basically is weeping and begging Abby to get tested. Mm -hmm. And the episode ends on Abby's face with those beautiful blue eyes and glossy lips popping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very haunting shot. Yes, I have a crush on Donna Mills. <laughs> I was I was like, man, that would be a great season finale. Right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think, Aaron? Do you think Abby's going to be a match? Do you think she's going to get tested? Well, of course she's going to be a match, because then there's going to be the drama. Will she give her kidney? Will she not give her kidney? She'll probably will give her kidney eventually. And then Abby will hang... Use it to hang over, you know, remind people all the time. I saved your daughter. <laughs> all right. I don't know how uh, true. I mean, yeah. Do you guys remember anything else that happened in this episode? Is very Diana focused. Yeah, it was pretty Diana focused. Um, Just good lord, is that family oh, you know in the hospital? <laughs> There was a little bit with Ginger and Kenny because this is when Ginger gave Kenny, Kenny the song that she was working on and he took it with him. And when CG was rehearsing, he felt they needed a ballad. And he's like, I'll oh, sing this one of my wife's. It's okay. She won't care. I didn't she think she would it. care. At least somebody's singing it. <laughs> I thought she was going to be like, oh, that's my song. Thanks, Kenny, for using it. Yeah. I think that's what he thought, too. <laughs> She's jealous. Ginger wants to be behind the microphone pretty bad. When she realized it was her song and she kept looking at Kenny and he kept looking at her and he was like, oh God, what did I do? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> what I do? And then she and got then she up. Could, okay. She, and she confronted CG and yeah, she looked crazy. <laughs> yeah, she did look crazy. <laughs> She's like, I'll get you back for this. I'll be yeah. like, oh, okay. And I was waiting for her to say your little dog too. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think I kind of like Ginger. Ginger has like those eyes that when she's playing angry, like it's like, oh, girl mad. Yeah. Watch <laughs> out. This is also when Chip learned from Lily May what was going on with Diana because Lily May's there with their tarot cards and she's reading them and trying to uh, yes. how this is going to all go. And as usual, uh, Lily May gives Chip money to go buy his flowers or whatever. He's say like, it's oh from my God. Us. Say it's from, from both of us. You know he only said it was from him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my God. I was waiting for there to be a line where, like, I got you flowers. <laughs> or she reads the card and it's just this love chip. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I remember Aaron texting about the tarot cards. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was nice little character development to see that you know she was into something kind of different. Yeah, like that. She picked up the card. She was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, back in the eighties, to have a character be like that, or re who would read tarot cards, was probably like, oh wow. Yeah, right. Because. <laughs> 
you can mention tarot cards around certain people in the South and they flip out like, oh my gosh, don't talk about those things here. Really? So a Ouija board would be out of the question is what you're saying. We will be in the store. I'll be like, oh, mom, look. She's like, don't even point at it. I was like, what if I brought one into your house? No, you won't. (laughs) Yeah, Ouija boards are... mm -mm. I had a Ouija board and my grandmother... Like was would scream at me. I'm like, I got it at Target. It's from Hasbro. <laughs> right. I'm like, it's, it's like, pink. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, Parker Brothers gonna, you know, or whatever the cut, you know. Um. All right. So on the scale of one to ten, on the Abby scale, what would you rate these episodes? Six and a half. Lynn. They weren't my favorite. Right. Well, I'm trying to think what I'd rate it. Probably like, I'd say it's probably like around a seven because I enjoyed the stuff that was happening with Karen and Mac and how they're developing and how their relationship's so volatile and they're breaking up back and forth. So it's kind of interesting. And I, I liked what it was building to with what's going on with Diana here a little bit too and how Chip's like so... He's got Diana and he's got CG and he's got mm-hmm. Lily May wrapped around his finger and he just, there's a lot of spinning that he's got going on. A lot of plates he's got spinning and keeping going all at once. I just feel like too much of the episodes focused on business stuff. I miss seeing more of the personal kind of like mm-hmm. lives. Got it. Aspect, if that makes sense. Uh, I was going to say a seven also because I, I know it gets better and I see the pieces being like placed and pushed around and we're building to something. Mm -hmm. It's kind of that mid season slump where like you kind of have to have these stories to get to the climax. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I hope you still want to watch it, Aaron. (laughs) Oh yeah. No, I'm not like bored. (laughs) I just, if I'm being unbiased, like it would be these four just, we're kind of like, meh, meh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Did John watch them with you? Yes. Okay. What'd you think of the recent episode of Nog's Landing? <laughs> when you were making bread, John. What'd you think of the episodes of Nog's Landing? Good, bad, 6.57? Is all right. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair knowing well I mean I know more than what will happen. So I, that number I'm I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm okay with that too. I just right, I, well, I didn't I didn't get enough Laura and I love Laura. Right. I did think about that when I noticed Laura finding the check. I'm like, we well, haven't really seen Laura do like, anything. She's <laughs> hardly in there. And they finally give Kenny a storyline, but they don't include Ginger. And Ginger's just the wife. <laughs> yeah, so th- those are my problems with these few episodes. Like, they're still good episodes. I'm not saying that, but... Yeah. Do you you, do you can tell they're really pushing for Mac and Karen, like, to be centralized. Mm-hmm. Who's your favorite character thus far? Still Karen. I just lo- I love her. Still Karen. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, Val hasn't been in a lot here lately so not in the four that we watched she really wasn't she was definitely a supportive character and that was that karen has been the main yeah person yeah her and abby mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do you like cg oh yeah i do like her she i can see why she was brought back after her character demise yes <laughs> Do you like Chip? I get annoyed with Chip. <laughs> and I think he's doing it right. <laughs> but he's nice to look at. <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing a good job at the part. No one yeah. like see I've seen him play, you know, Lawrence Alame, which is vastly different. So it's nice to see him play. You know, you can tell he just wants this life that wasn't given like he wants this a different kind of life he's a good bser and you know people 
some people are catching on to it a little bit sooner than others. You know what I mean? But yeah, I mean, I think because I have fallen for BSers like that. Yeah. First, when he's, I'm like, no. Like, I'm making sure I shut myself off. I'm like, no. <laughs> don't like, I know it's a fictional character, but no. I'm not even going <laughs> to fall for it. Nope, not this time. <laughs> we got to get a rubber band for you so you can just snap it on your wrist. Then <laughs> <laughs> you get too attached to a fictional character. Nope, nope. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like Chip. I because feel like he was a, an important addition to the season. He really gets things moving along. Yep. I am I am Lily Mae when it comes to Chip. <laughs> Here's some money, honey. Say it's from both of us. Let me let me take in your jacket for you and make it all fit perfect and you know on and on and on. I will say I won't go as far as to say I'm enjoying Lily Mae, but I'm tolerating her more. Than I'm actually season. I'm enjoying her. <laughs> I'm enjoying her too. I think she's she's good to be there in the mix because she's, she's very her better. She's less annoying, <laughs> and she's, she's more naive. comical. She's pretty naive, you know what I mean, and, and that will most likely change. But right now, she's pretty naive. Mm -hmm. it's That's all I want to say. On that everyone, one. sweet pea, sweet pea. Sweet tea Sweet or sugar, sugar. <laughs> you gotta, rem you gotta remind them that Ewings are from Texas. <laughs> you be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> the gospel truth. <laughs> well, all right. So that was our coverage of episodes seven to ten of season four. We, mm -hmm. of course, will be back very soon with probably another four to five episodes. Um, until then, like and subscribe us on all the socials at Queers and Soaps. And subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Queers and Soaps for exclusive content. If you're watching this, you already have, so thank you. Um, and we will see you next week for Falcon Crest in our segment, Don't Touch My Grapes. <laughs> you be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> until then. <laughs>